I have not yet posted the slides because we're going to mostly be walking through a review and I wanted to just capture what we talked about in the slides and uh, we will um, uh, excuse me. Couldn't find the share button. Uh, I want to capture what we talk about uh, in the review in the slides and then I'll post them uh, right after we're done. I want to share PyCharm and I want to share Google Chrome. Okay, and if we need to share something else, we can do that. Okay. Alrighty, as I said, I have not yet posted this because I wanted to use this as a, as a vector for capturing what we talked about during today's review. We will go as long or as short as you need. Um, as far as the exam, it is in class. If you've been paying attention to the majors sections discussion on Discord, they are having a take home exam next week. They will get their exam on Friday. It's take home. They will have a week. They'll be doing it all next week. Blah, blah, blah. That does not apply to us. That does not apply to us at all. Okay. So on Wednesday, uh, during the regular class time, starting at 4 p.m., uh, you will log on to your Blackboard account and go to the part of Blackboard for this course. Uh, the test is mostly up there. I haven't finished typing it, but it doesn't matter. I'm going to make it available to you at 4 p.m. or, you know, within a minute or two of 4 p.m. Uh, the way Blackboard is set up, you will have 90 minutes from when you start. Those to whom this does not apply, I've already contacted. Um, and you just work through it and submit it when you're done. Uh, again, one, as long as you finish by 90 minutes. Uh, just like the sample exam, which we'll work through in a little bit, the actual test on Wednesday has 10 multiple choice questions or 10 multiple choice true-false. Um, each of those are worth three points. So that section is worth 30 points, and Blackboard will tell you when you submit your test how you did on that 30 points. There are five short answer questions similar to what we're working through today in the sample exam. I set them up as essay questions so you can type as much as you want. Those are worth five points each, so that's 25. And then there's two programming questions that are worth 10 points each, so that's the last 20. If you do the math, if I haven't made a typo, the bottom line is this is 75 points. Uh, so not a huge amount, but a, you know enough for you really you should be focusing on. Uh, the 10 multiple choice true false, obviously, there's no partial credit that's right or wrong. The short answer of the programming are definitely partial credit. And I tend to be fairly generous if you've made a good effort. Okay, if you've made a good effort, I tend to be fairly lenient with the partial credit. So please do not leave the short answer of the programming blank. Make it, make an attempt. Give it a shot. See what you can do. Okay, so... It's like I put out the sample exam because it's supposed to be you know, practice. I don't want to test your skills on Blackboard. I want to test your computer science knowledge. I will be available on the regular class WebEx, this one right here where I am right now, during the exam, listening if you have any questions. I'll have my camera off just because I'll be doing other stuff, but I'll be listening if you have any questions. I understand sometimes, you know, my question was clear to me, but it might not be clear to you. You could ask. That's your vector. Uh, you do not have to be on the class WebEx. If you want to just be on Blackboard without any interruptions or anything bothering you, feel free. Uh, just jump in or off the WebEx in case you have a question. You know, some people like to listen to it in case they hear classmates who have a question. That's okay. Uh, that's entirely voluntary and entirely up to you. I know some students want to be alone and not bothered and don't get on WebEx at all. Others want to listen the whole time. That's fine. It's up to you. It's completely optional. I will be here in case you have a question, in case something's not clear, but it's completely optional. Uh, please don't cheat. We've had the academic integrity quiz. There was an issue with that. I have fixed it. I know a couple of people told me that they had the um, uh, they had issues with academic integrity. Apparently, I checked the wrong box. I could have sworn I checked that box that said unlimited attempts. That's now fixed. Um, so on the test, it's open book. You can use the lecture notes. You can use other notes. You can use whatever. 
Do not interact with other students at all during the test. I do not use the lockdown browser. I do not have your web camera on. I don't have any of that stuff. You're adults, folks. Okay, you're adults. You're trusted to behave properly. Do not text your friends about, hey, I don't understand, you know, for, for number four, I got B. Do you get B for number four? Don't do that. Uh, and don't go posting questions to the internet. The reason we have the test in class rather than the take home, frankly, is it limits your ability to go post the questions on the internet. I guarantee you, terrible thing to say, but true. When Professor Hamilton and Professor Wilson released the take home test on Friday for the majors, their programming questions are going to be on the internet within an hour after they make the test available. I hate to say that, you know, it's always two or three out of 600, but it happens. Don't do that. Give it your best shot. Take your grade. Okay. It, it's not that huge and we'll get through it. The last thing is if two students submit code or short answers that are identical in every respect, you know, I understand I'm asking you for three lines of code, right? It's really hard to be unique in three lines of code. So you're going to look fairly similar, but on occasion, there's always that one student. I look at this and go, this code is identical, including variable names to somebody else. So all I'm asking you here is to follow the rules. It's open book. You can use your notes. Here's a hint. Open pie chart. And when you think you're writing the code to answer the programming problem, run it in pie chart and see if it runs. That's OK. That's legal. That's not cheating. You can do that. It's open book. OK, so, you know, go ahead and. Do it on your own. Ah, uh, what's on this turkey? Everything we've covered in class up through last Wednesday, we stopped. When last Wednesday's lecture stopped, material on this test stopped. Okay. So you have to know about variables. And the variables you have to know about are integers, strings, floats, booleans, and lists. Those are the types of variables you need to know about. Constants. Again, yeah, Python really doesn't support constants, but you should know them. And you can have constants of all those same types. String operations. You should know how to access an individual character in a string. You should know split. You should know join. You should know strip, all the methods that we use to operate on strings. You should know that you can't change an individual character in a string because you can't access it. You can access it to read it, but you can't modify it. List operations, you should know the basic methods we talked about, insert, append, pop, remove, delete. I didn't type it here, but let's add length. Same thing about, a, you know, you should know that length works on string as well. Operators and operator precedents, the arithmetic operators, plus, times, minus, divide, integer divide, modulus. Logical operators and or not. Comparison operators, less than, greater than, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, not equal to. Um, and the assignment operators, equals, plus equals, times equals, divide equals, integer divide equals, the same thing. Okay, and precedence, what order? We do times before we do minus. Okay, there's an order of these things. Conditionals, the if statement, the if else statement, and the if elif else. Now, when I say you should know this, you should be able to write code, including those, but you should also know the general rules. For example, you have to have that colon after your Boolean condition. You have to have a Boolean condition, something that evaluates to true or false. You cannot have uh, an if with no code. You can't just say if this, no code, immediately else, things like that. Loops. For each loops, for I loops, and while loops, all three of them, set in the loops and Boolean flags, okay? Things we talked about last week is applying to loops. So that's the material. Now, if I left anything out that I've talked about in the lecture notes from, from January 26th through last uh, Wednesday, it's on the test, but that's the, these are the major things that we've got. So those are your topics. Um, now let's talk about the sample exam and work, work through it. And I'm going to say some things as I work through the sample exam and, and talk about some um, specific things uh, that, that may help with homeworks and labs and things like that. Okay, so you'll go to Blackboard, you'll go to this section, 
And under assessments, right now they're sample exam one on Wednesday at around four o'clock within a minute or two, you will see the actual exam one. And so you will open it up and it will be presented to you. Come on, Blackboard. Instructions. Um, the sample exam, obviously, you could resume it later. Um, the actual test, you got 90 minutes, so I wouldn't recommend stopping. I printed out a PDF just in case this doesn't work, so we can still walk through it. But it'll walk through something like this. So let's walk through it. Question one, which of the following statements is true about four each loops in Python? Uh, they're to be used only when you want to do something with every element of a list exactly one time. That's true. They are more general and more powerful than while loops. That's false. While loops are the most general, and I misspelled while. It's okay. The programmer must take care to prevent them from becoming infinite loops. No, that's not true of for each loop. So the answer would be here. Okay. Question two. What's the value of the following Python expression? Okay, this is easy. I mean, if you if you evaluate everything, that's straightforward. Here's an easy thing. This is an and. Remember that an and is only true if everything on both sides is true. Okay, nine is less than one. That's false. This whole thing is going to come out to be false. Okay. So if you want to evaluate it, nine is greater than three is true. 5 times 8 is 40, plus 2 is greater than 50 is false. So we have true or false, that's true. True and, and um, false is false. Question 3, which of the following is not a valid variable name in Python? Let me open up chat. Is the sample exam still open? It should be. It should be open until tomorrow night. Uh, which of the following is not a valid variable name? You cannot start with a digit, so two times the number of runs is not a valid variable name. Remember this particular one, number of runs with capital O, capital R, that's called camel case, and we don't use it in CompSci 201. We prefer snake case, snake case with the underscores, but that's legal in Python. It's just a, a, a style issue in CompSci 201. Ah, four. True or false, Python does not natively support constants. That is true. When you define something at all caps, you know you're not supposed to change it in CompSci 201, but Python would let you change it if you tried. So this statement is true. We fake Pyth uh, constants in Python using all caps, because Python as a, as a language doesn't support them. Question five. If you write a conditional section of code and you find that you have an if and an l if that covers everything, you don't need an else, what can you do? Well, you cannot have an if and an l if without having an else. You can have an if by itself with no else. That's cool. You can have an if and an else with no l if. That's the two case. That works fine. If you have an if and an l if, you've got to have an else. So if you discover you've got an if and an l if and no else, Okay, we got to reorganize this thing. So the first one, rewrite your code using just an if and an else because you can't have if and else if without else. That's true. You could do that. Restructure the code as two different if statements. You could do that. Rewrite the Boolean condition. Then I misspelled rewrite the Boolean condition. So you have an additional case to put in the else. You could do that too. Use any of the above techniques. Just don't leave it the way it is because you're not allowed to have an else without an else. Here is the correct answer to question five. Any th other three above would work. The key is you are not allowed to have an LF without an else. Okay, question six. What's the proper term for the following code execution flow? This may not be clear, but what I'm getting at here is we learned three different types of code flow. We learned sequential. Sequential is statement, 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 statement. Every statement in order one time. That's sequential. Conditional. If. Do it sometimes, skip it sometimes. Conditional flow has if statements. And iterative. 
looping for or while loop either one do this over and over and over again possibly many times so we learned sequential we learned conditional and we learned sequential so of those three because we have if and else this is conditional flow so that's what i wanted to get at with this question we learned condi sequential conditional and iterative and this is conditional because it's an if else, because we conditionally execute the code. We do it if something is true. Seven, the Python split statement takes its string and returns a list consisting of the elements of that string. That is true. That is what Python split does. Split takes a, takes a string and returns a list, breaking the string up on what you tell it, the default is on white space, blank spaces, tabs, new lines, but it can be on whatever you want, okay, and you returns a list. Take a string, return a list, that's split. Okay, question eight. Suppose I have a variable L, it's a string variable, and L has blank space RGB, blank space, that's the value. So there's a blank space on both R, on both sides of RGB. The true true or false, the result of L dot R strip, this is supposed to be strip is the string. Now in this case, I triple check, I try to triple check the exa actual exams. If there is something that's a misspelled, if there's a typo, that's why you ping me on WebEx. Hey, is this a trick question? I try not to give trick questions. I try not to say, oh, well, see, I, that's a typo. So that's, I try not to do that. This is supposed to be spelled L, L dot R strip. Okay, so the question is, what does R strip do? R strip removes blank spaces at the end only. So L dot R strip would be still having the blank space here and then RGB. So true or false, the result is, the string with all the spaces gone, this is false. This is false because R strip only gets rid of the blank space over here. R strip does not get rid of this blank space. Okay. Nine. Which of the following is not a white space character in Python? White space characters are new lines, tabs, blank spaces. And we haven't really gotten into them, but form feeds, page breaks, if you prefer. So page breaks along with new lines, tabs, blank spaces, those are all white space. A comma is not white space. A comma is a comma. It's a special character. So the answer to question nine is the comma character. Question 10. Logical operators and or or not have a higher precedence than the arithmetic operators. And I just randomly picked integer division and modulus in Python. That is false. Arithmetic has highest precedence. When I said earlier, when I walked through the slides, that you need to know operators and operator precedence. Uh, you know, again, this is you need to know when you're evaluating an expression, do you do the math first, do you do the and or not first? You do the math first. Okay. And again, it's open book. You can look it up if you don't remember. It helps, you know, you've only got 90 minutes, so you don't want to have to look up every question, but you can look it up. The bottom line is you do the arithmetic first, then you worry about all the other stuff later. So question 10 is false. Those are your 30 points, multiple choice, uh, true, false. And again, you're going to have 10 questions on Wednesday. Now, short answer, this is the kind of thing I'm looking for. Question 11, explain what the Python symbol table is and how it helps you determine the current value of a variable. Okay. Uh, mouse control, mouse control. The symbol table is a data structure that lists the currently known variables and constants and stuff like that. But for our purposes, the question asks about variables. What type they are and what address in memory 
holds the current value. Okay, so how do they help you determine if the, the current value of a variable, if the variable is in the symbol table, go to that address and get the current value. This is an acceptable answer that we get you all five points credit. Okay. Um, so, you know, I, again, I'd be pretty lenient as long as you demonstrated an understanding of what the symbol table is. The value is not in the symbol table. The symbol table is where you go to get the address. The actual value is in memory. That's what I'm looking for here. You could add that if the variable was not in the symbol table, it's a new, it's a new variable, and, but that's not really needed. You know, I'm looking for the symbol table has uh, the names of all the known current variables and the addresses. The type is important because remember the address memory, it's just a string of bits. It's a string of ones and zeros. Is it the number 65 or the letter capital A? It's the type that tells you that. So that's what I'm looking for there. Okay, suppose you have the string, and this case, it's not a typo, it's a deliberate misspelling. S, S equals Baltimore County Public Schools reopen March 1st. You know, I, I, I've mistyped. I wanted to type reopen, I typed reopen. I gotta fix it. Write Python code that will produce a string fixed S, now, this is in the short answer section because you don't have to write the whole program, just, you know, a couple of lines of Python. That is the same as S, except that reopen is spelled correctly. Um, there's always that wise person who says, oh, then I'll just do an assignment statement. Fixed S equals the right string. No, no, this is a serious test. You've got to give me a little bit here. Okay, so here's the answer. Here's an acceptable answer. There's a bunch of other ways to do it here. This is the string. What I'm going to do is write a loop that goes through this string character by character and copies it into the new location. And except that inserts an E in the right one, in, in the proper thing. Okay. So now I can't add letters to letters to a string, right? So what I'm going to have to do is use split and join. So S is the string I've got. The string I've got. I'll leave that. I'm going to say this. List L equals um, S dot split. And I'm going to let it split on the blank space. Okay. This is going to give me a list of each word. Now I know I'm going to want this one. This word is the one that's going to have to be fixed. So I now have to go in there. Um, and I will go in and, and fix that word. So. Um, what I can do is actually split the entire string character by character. Okay. And, and I could split the entire string character by character if I want to. Um, I don't think I gave you that in the lecture notes, but you could love. Basically, what we're going to do is we're going to split this particular string uh, letter by letter, and then we're going to go find the three and replace it. Hang on just a second. There we go.
You know, this is, let me skip this. We'll come back to this. This is a really bad question. I just realized because my solution includes something I don't think I talked about. We're going to come back to this. I'll give you the answer. I will make sure the actual test doesn't have this. Let's try this one. 13, given the list spectrum, the, the, the short answer is what I do is I copy uh, each character one by one. And then when I hit the three, I replace it with a... Um, E, replace it with an E, and then I join it together. And I'm going to skip that, but I've got to step. I'll come back to this. Red or the spectrum, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. Write Python code that results in the spectrum being the list red, green, and blue. We can't do that. Okay. So we have the list spectrum. What we want to do is spectrum dot remove. This is an except one way to do it. Orange spectrum dot remove. Now you can remove one thing at a time. Remove. If you want to remove more than one item at a time, you have to use Dell. You could do Dell. Yellow spectrum dot remove. The key is I'm looking for you to understand that remove gets rid of the element by its value. Let me go up and fix this typo. That is an acceptable answer, those four lines of Python. Um, an acceptable, another acceptable answer, if you want to, um, sorry, if you wanted to use pop instead, we start at the end. This is zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. So we could say spectrum dot pop the uh, index six. Spectrum dot pop five that gets rid of indigo, and then also one and two. Spectrum dot pop two, spectrum dot pop one. Okay, so. There, um, we could use either one of these sections of code. You could do remove by the value. You could do it by popping the index. I don't care. Either one, you get full credit. Uh, 14, if L is a Python list, explain the difference between L.insert and L.append. L.append puts the new value at the end of the list, l.insert, puts the new value at the location, specify the index, whatever you want to say, specify in the insert statement. All I'm looking for there, append puts it at the end, Insert puts it at the specific location. 15, if spectrum is a Python list, explain why spectrum index length of spectrum always results in an index out of bounds error. Okay, remember length of spectrum, length of any list or string returns the number of elements in the list. You always start counting at zero. The first element has index zero. The last element always has index length minus one. So the last one is always length minus one, which is why we can shorten that to minus one. Okay. 
and um, the um, uh, I'm sorry, I lost myself. Yeah. So the last index is always uh, length minus one. So length is always one bigger than that. There can never be this particular element. So therefore, you will always get that error. All righty. Now, um, 16 and 17. 17 is a lot easier, so I'm going to do that program first. Okay. The formula for the area of a circle is pi r squared, where r is the radius of pi for the sake of argument is 3.14159. And I've given you a hint by all caps that it should be a constant. Write a Python program that calculates and print the areas of circles with radii ranging from 1 to 20. Okay. So I'm going to declare my constant pi equals 3.14159. And now I'm going to say for i in range now. I could say from 1 to 21, or I could say, uh, in this case, start at 0 and go to 20. Okay, either of those is acceptable. Here's what I'm going to do. Area equals pi times, in this case, i or let's let's be reasonable and call this radius. Radius pi times radius. I would not take off if you use i in this case to the second power, and that should be there. Was I was going to get myself with this. There we go. That was the trick. Print area. This is all you need. This is a perfectly valid, complete Python program, which if I haven't made a typo, will give you what you want. The key is here that in the range statement, because I used range of 20, initially radius is zero. Okay, initially radius is zero. And I just want 1 to 20. I do want 20. I do not want 21. So that's why I said radius plus 1. Now, if you got this index off by 1 and you wrote exactly this code, except you said radius squared, I would take off one or two of the 10 points. You would get almost all the credits. That's why I said partial credit try. Okay. This is an acceptable answer. Again, there's lots of ways to do it. I could use a while loop. I could have used a couple of other things. Again, I could have said rate in range from 1 to 21 and then just said radius, not, not radius plus 1. Uh, any of this works. That's what I mean. That's really the, the actual programming questions on the test are a little harder than that. That was a little easier than I expected it to be. But that's the answer you would get here. Again, it is perfectly valid. It is legal. There's no cheating involved. If you take the code that you type in here and you run it in PyCharm to make sure it works first and does what you think, you can proof your work. That's okay. Just, you know, you're limited to 90 minutes. That's an acceptable answer for this one. Now, um, when the user, let's see, this is a little harder. 16 is a little harder. If you could do 16, you won't have any problems on Wednesday. This is a little harder than I wanted to have. Uh, we're going to create a magic word from user input. Ask the user to input a word at a time. The user should enter a lowercase q when they're done with the input. Uh, append each word to a list of words the user's input. When the user's type q, Join all the words together in a single string with each word separated by a comma. Add a message that the user's magic word is a string. For example, if the user types Louisiana State University Fighting Tigers and types Q, this is what you should get. Okay. So remember with a list, we we're going to initialize it to um, an empty list. So magic word 
is going to start out as an empty list. Okay. Now, we're going to use a while loop because we're prompting the user to input data and we don't know um, how many words the user is going to input. So we really can't use a for, we're going to use a while. We should use a priming read just in case the user decides that this is a silly game and doesn't want to do it anymore or has run out of time or whatever. So we're going to do our priming read. In terms of comments, you only need, I'm grading this personally, you only need to include as many comments as you think I need to understand what you're doing. Here, I'll put in a comment that says, I'm going to do a priming read. My priming read says this, word equals input, please enter your first word, type Q to quit. Now, I can do my while, while because I have a value for word, while word is not equal to Q, colon, magic word dot append word. Now, remember with the list, with appending, this variable that I'm appending to has to be a list already. If you leave out this initialization statement, the first time this executes, it's going to fail because it doesn't know that this is a list. So that's why we have to initialize it first. We got the first value. Now we're going to ask for the next word. Word equals input. Please enter the next word. I don't care. It's okay if you say next word, first word, whatever, all the time. I mean, give me a give me a reasonable prompt for a user. Okay. There we go. Now, when the loop has ended, join the list into a string. Words separated by commas. Only as many comments as you think I need to understand what your code is going to do. Okay. So what we do is, since I already used magic word, I can't use that again. M word equals comma dot join magic word. And now print your magic word is comma M word. So this is an acceptable answer. Now, as I said, this is perfectly legitimate on Wednesday to do this. This is not cheating. Let's go to PyCharm. Oh, very nice. Blackboard keeps me from copying the, does Blackboard keep me from copying the code there? Yes, it does. Interesting. Cool. Okay. We've got time.
Um, Join All right. So now we will go ahead and run this. And I want to run March first, Cody. So let's see. There we go. I typed an extra space after university. So we have verified that our proposed code actually works. So feel free to do that. Okay. That's what I'm looking for in the code that you'll be writing in class or in on the test on Wednesday. Okay. So let me go back to the other one and, and, and give you the answer to this. You use the uh, in. Um, this one. Uh, you remember the key is that in um, for uh, word in L. If three in word. What I'm doing right now is I'm going through each word. I've, I've created a list by splitting my phrase. Now, if three, which is the typo, is not in the word, I don't have to do anything. Um, I just leave it alone. I'm just going to leave the, uh, the word alone. Um, if it is, then what I have to do is um, split the word into a list and replace the list element. So let's go ahead and do this. Let's just do this right. We're, we're going to leave everything else the same. And do it. If three is in word, now what I have to do is split the entire Four uh, create a new list Now I can fix the list. Now I can fix the three. Um.
Now we join everything back together. Yeah, this is a ridiculous question. Good thing we did it on the sample. That's an empty string. No, nothing in between. Join the whole string. Blank space dot join. Um, what did I call it? L. Okay, that is your answer. That's a ridiculous question. That won't happen on the fine on the actual exam. I'll double check it. But basically, what we have to do, we have learned the in term in a list in is a Boolean operator that returns true if the value is in the list, false otherwise. In a string, n returns true if the character you're looking for uh, is in there, and if not, uh, if not, it's um, going to return false. So what we're doing here is this creates a list. This checks each string in the list and sees if the character three, the digit three, is in that um, particular word in the list. So we're going to isolate the, war the only word that has the three. For that word, we then have to go through uh, and split it character by character into a new list. Then I have, because I cannot change a string, I can change a list. Then once I have it in this in this new, once I have that word split into a list of characters, I can go replace the character three with an e, and now I join the word back together, and now I join the string back together, and that is the code that would do it. Which, like I said, is kind of ridiculous for a five point. Um, question and so you won't have anything this ridiculous on the actual exam but what you will have on the exam is you cannot change the element an individual character in a string if you want to change an element in a string you got to split the string up into characters that make a list and then you can recombine them using a join to a new list because you can change an element of the list long string ridiculous nah you're not going to have that on the exam this is why i go through this okay so that is the sample exam. That's the number of questions, the type of questions. Uh, other than that one, which is ridiculous, um, this is more or less the level of difficulty. The second programming question, number 17, was kind of a little easy. I mean, you know, for a test question, four lines of Python, that's a little, eh. they'll be a little bit harder than that. But they won't be harder than this, and they'll probably be a little bit easier than this. Uh, the key things you'll be asked to do are, you know, loops and sentinels and priming reads and things like that. At that point, I have covered everything I wanted to cover. I do want to show you one thing that may be useful on your homework, and so we'll go to PyCharm. And that's the case where... Um, we have a, there's, there, if you look at the homework, there's a um, place where you have to split a string up. And then you can join it back and put things in with, for example, a new line. So let me get the exact homework question.
I also looked at home at lab five uh, for tomorrow should be no particular issue. By the way, uh, you can you can do that without problems. I know it's a heavy week for you because we've got the exam. We've got the homework and we've got a lab, but the lab. And the homework, the test is in class. The lab is straightforward and the homework is actually not bad. And I've been pleased with your. Um, um, homework grade so far, the, most of you are doing pretty well. Most of you have the 90% or 95% uh, grade. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah, here we go. So what we're doing here is uh, the HTML forward formatting problem. You have something like this that says fruits equal the list apples um, oranges. Bananas. We'll stop there. If you join those together, um, you can say fruit string equals separate each of those things with a new line dot join fruits. Now let's get a Python console. And look at the current value of fruit string. It's got apples, uh, new line, oranges, bananas. Now, what if we print that though? Okay, if we print it, now because of the new lines, we see we get one word per line. So this is sort of how you're going to use the uh, string operators, the list operator split and join to do this HTML formatting without doing it in a loop. Because remember, you're not allowed to do this in a loop. So that's a hint. Now, the actual assignment, you have to not just put new lines, you have to put these LIs and slash LIs as well. So if you did that, what if you put um, new line LI? slash li. So what you need to do is play around with this and give it a try. See how, see what it works. Now, I'll tell you right now, I didn't give you the answer because if you do this, it will not provide exactly the output you're looking for. But that's kind of a hint as to how you're going to do this, the separator string. So in la this is what I talked about last Wednesday in lecture. This uh, is what I called SEP, where the separator string in the single quotes here with the join. Okay, you can put pretty much anything you want in here, and so by doing that, I will um, be able to create things that have most of the stuff I want. Now I'm going to prove to you, but that's not quite exactly the answer you need, but that should get you a good chunk of the way starting to that formatting and how you split that. And you'll notice there's no loop. There's just three lines of code. There's just a join. There's no for loop that goes through and puts everything before or after each one. Uh, I just allow, I just rely on join to do this. So since I didn't cover join until last Wednesday, I wanted to make sure you understand this is kind of how we do this. We take this list that we're starting with, Okay, we take the list, 
and we can join it into a string and each element in the string can be separated by these things that we have here. And they're not just blank spaces or commas or nothing at all. They are, you know, new line characters or these uh, HTML hashtags. So that's a key thing with join. And as I said, you've got join on the test. You are responsible for it. I had a couple of the problems in the sample exam that used join. Again, that one was kind of ridiculous. You won't see anything that hard. But the um, um, rest of it is, is fairly straightforward. You will have to understand join. That was it. If you have any questions, I'm here. If not, I will see you on Wednesday. If you have questions between now and then, feel free to ping me. Any questions? Uh, the question somebody asked there is it is there a way to directly change the three using the index? No, because this is a string. So that's where I had to work around. So yeah, I, that, that question is clearly ridiculous for ninety minutes. So anyway, I will see you all on uh, Wednesday then.